Hello and welcome to Ink Piece Episode 4, Ink Harder. This episode gets a little bit personal and is partially scripted, as I wanted to make sure I express myself the best I can. Maybe one day I'll write a full essay on this topic, but for now, this will do. Craig of the Creek is an animated show about the day-to-day -day life and imaginative adventures of 10-year-old Craig Williams, his best friends Kelsey and JP, and lots of other kids at their local creek. It is also one of the most profoundly impactful pieces of media I have ever watched. Craig of the Creek is the kind of unabashedly positive, genuinely wholesome show I wish I could have watched as a child. It is in many ways a spiritual successor to Hey Arnold, sharing a lot of its themes, but in my opinion, taking them further. It accurately depicts and celebrates positive masculinity, emotional openness, empathy, and explorations of one's identity. It has an ensemble cast of characters, most of whom are a variety of marginalized ethnicities and gender identities, none of them tokenized, all of them fully fleshed out. Like Solarpunk, it's the kind of story that encourages you to imagine how the world and our relationships with each other can be better. Now, you might think it odd that an adult could learn and be moved by a show that is ostensibly marketed at young children. And yet, I have learned from it. I have been moved by it, and I think the show can and has done that for viewers of all ages. It is thanks to Craig of the Creek that I can appreciate the potential in imaginary stories to do tangible good in the world. That I am getting better at feeling good about myself and my skills as an artist. And that I was recently able to address feelings I had been experiencing for a long time and reevaluate my gender identity. As strange as it might sound, it's thanks to Craig of the Creek that I first felt brave enough to ask myself, what if I don't always feel like a man? What if sometimes I feel more like a woman? Or a mix of both? And what if that were okay? The gap-toothed, bespectacled youth you can see me drawing is a reinterpretation of my younger self, in the style of Craig of the Creek. My creek sona, if you will. We didn't have a creek in my hometown in Italy, and I was a fairly shy, introverted preteen. I had a couple of friends from school, but I never went on make-believe adventures like Craig and his friends. The one time where I think I got close to living that kind of childhood experience was when I was around 10 or 11 years old and went to what we called Estate Ragazzi. It was kind of like summer camp, hosted by a local school, with all of the activities but none of the camping. You would go there in the morning and stay there until dinner time and go home. I knew absolutely nobody there, uh, and so I kept to myself, drawing away under the nearest unoccupied tree. But one day, uh, one of the teens who were helping run things there noticed me drawing and asked if I would be interested in designing a mural for the school. I said yes, and word started to spread about that kid with the funny name who can draw really well. Other kids started asking me to draw things for them, like Spider-Man or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and soon enough I was opening up and I was feeling more confident. I started making comic books about a character called Super Toilet. I was a big Captain Underpants fan at the time. I was even able to sell some of them to the teens who offered to pay me for them, before I got found out and my comics were confiscated. During this time, whenever I got back home, I started designing an alter ego for myself. A caped and masked superhero called Grapho Boy, 
whose drawings could magically come to life. I had one of those roll-up pen cases that I imagined wearing like a bandolier or a utility belt. I even made myself a mask with cunningly cut out holes so that it could go over my glasses without them fogging up. I never got the courage to don the outfit outside of my bedroom. And then, before I knew it, the summer was over. Now, so many years later, I can't help but wonder how things would have gone if I'd been able to watch Craig of the Creek back then. Perhaps Graffa Boy would have made his real life debut. Perhaps I would have had less trouble making friends later on in life. And perhaps I would have felt confident enough to acknowledge my gender fluidity much earlier and let Graffo Girl take the stage. Either way, I am very happy and incredibly thankful to have been here in time to enjoy the show. If you haven't watched it and it sounds like your kind of thing, I heartily recommend it. It has done wonders for me. Now, before I wrap up, if my previous ink piece covering my pocket-sized RPG piqued your interest, you might like to know it now has a name, Stravagante, and that I've given my $5 or more tier patrons early access to the game, before I publish it sometime next month. So, thank you so much for watching. In the future I might write more about Craig of the Creek and other media that inspires me over on my newsletter, the Penflower Post, which you can subscribe to for free. If you would like to support my work, there are links to my shop, Itch.io, Coffee, and Patreon in the description below. Until next time, bye bye. <laughs>